And welcome back, Gamer Nation. SKS here with another episode of 80 Days, brought to you by Scarlet Ranger. This is part of the Game Blit 2017. Last time we left off, we are in Bucharest. Let's see what we have in our bags. We have a lot of stuff. We'll need to go to the market, probably. Oh my god, worth $5,000 in Moscow? But we are trying to make our way south. I'm in Roaring Hill. Uh, okay, so he needs to stay in a hotel. But what we need to do is we're going to Istanbul, and then we're going to go to the southern route. So we'll be okay. But let's go ahead and stay at the hotel and let his health go back up, hopefully into the 90s. Call it. Monsieur Fogg informed me that Bucharest was known, known rather wildly as Little Paris. He was most certainly trying to vex me with his comparison, make me feel at home. Though my Frenchman's pride bristled at little at the comparison, I took an evening stroll from the hotel through the main boulevard of Bucharest, Padul Mogosaye. It was paved in small cobblestone. I paid it no heed. Rather than macadam or asphalt, but was lined with gas lamps in the latest German style. Gentlemen and ladies paraded their stylish run carriages up and down the avenue. It was undeniably charming. But no, absolutely. No matter what Monsieur Fogg might think. At the furthest point of my walk, I passed a lamp, cunningly fashioned in the shape of a lily. This was the output of the artificer's guild here in Bucharest. I tried the door, but it was locked, and the lights inside were dim. Strange. The hour was not so late, I thought. Relations with Fogg have improved slightly. Interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and explore so we can find our route. Oh, you're telling me there's not one to Istanbul? I took a tram to the city center, which was modern and ever since the word. Electric lights illuminated all but a handful of shop fronts and boyers' residences. Bozek cars sputtered oil fumes into the air, and vendors hawked all manner of little automata on street corners. I saw the lamp of the lily once more. I pushed the door open. And immediately began to cough from the dust in the air. I looked at the dark-haired woman. Behind the far counter, she seemed startled at my appearance and narrowed her eyes in suspicion. Tu sais, ça va, Hadout? Nous prêts du Romanesque. I flashed a charming smile. I mimed a lack of understanding. Uh, yeah. I apologized haltingly. Francois? English? Her shoulders relaxed fractionally. Your Romanian is awful, she proclaimed in flawless French. I bowed and introduced myself. She gave only her name as Steinberg omitting her proper title, which placed me in a rather awkward position. Uh, Madame Steinberg? Mademoiselle Steinberg? Let's say Mademoiselle. I hazardly... Just Steinberg, she corrected sternly. Now what do you want here? Uh, I showed her the medallion. But thought, though she nodded, she appeared nonetheless unimpressed. So you've met our guild before. What is that to me? I would like your help. Perhaps I can help you too. Let's ask for help. I said, my master and I, we are, we could do little for you, she interrupted. The guild is not very popular at the moment. She allowed, struggling, struggling. Independence is the current fashion. The guild is too Ottoman for our new prince. Also, Steinberg gave me a look of frank challenge. The guild openly hires Jews. A Jew can also be also a Romanian citizen. The guild follows its own laws. Yeah, let's find more about this guild. I nodded. The prince must know that. The prince pretends he doesn't know who keeps his trams running and his gas lamps lit. I browsed the guild wares for a good half hour, but found little of value or interest. I took my leave of Steinberg and wished her well. With sincerity. A most extraordinary person. I walked back to Monsieur Fogg. Alright, let's go to the market. This is pressure gauge. A portable pressure gauge. Good for diagnosing problems with steam systems. Driving go goggles. We probably needed those. <sighs> Thessaloniki, yeah. There's nothing here I really want. Um, I'm really upset. We have to go from Greece over to Istanbul, right? Oh, 
departing in 25 minutes. We'll lose Dick. We barely made it. For Bucharest, we hired a Phaeton to take us through the mountains and into Greece. Florin, the driver announced abruptly, sticking out his hand. I shook it. Though it was covered in oil and engine grease. Get in, he said, jerking his thumb at the carriage. We did so, and he began the process of igniting the boiler inside the horse. Is there any way to go faster? I asked. You can't flog a mechanical horse, he answered solemnly, as though giving me a piece of hard-earned wisdom. You could stroke it harder. A fair point. I'm gonna say stroke it harder. You could stroke you could stroke it harder. Don't tell me my job, Florin retorted. Then he released the handbrake. Aw, relations with fog have deteriorated slightly. Well that sucks. How did that piss him off? Um let's take care of fog. Thank you, your attentions are most beneficial. We rode the first day in relative silence, watching the forest pass us on either side. Are these roads not prone to banditry? I peered into the depth. Glad of the decent road, there must have been a time when travelers would have had to cut between the trees themselves. Evening approached. We could drive through on through the night, Florin said, or make camp and continue in the morning. Uh, drive all night. Surely camping will lose us time. Let us camp. We're in a hurry, though. What's that? Surely camping will lose us time. A little, he granted, though I will have to drive slower in the dark. Let us camp. Let us camp, I decided. We cannot risk an accident in the dark. The driver nodded and pulled up near a close stand of trees. This is a decent enough spot. Your character is now zestful. I'm really worried about not getting to Istanbul. So you're going to Greece, our driver asked, quite sudden as he released the handbrake lever the next morning. We have passed an uneventful night by walking between the trees. Um... We're going to Istanbul. Four giggled. You're going from Bucharest to Istanbul via Greece. Did you ever see a map? There's something we need to do first. He shrugged. Like traveling, then, do you? Yes. I know a man in Athens, Thorn grumbled. He runs boat. The contempt in his voice was all too clear. Boats to where? Cairo, I think, Thorn smiled. I don't do boat. How might we find him? At the docks, he replied, with pleasingly little sarcasm. His name is Sophos. I'll put in a word for you when I talk to him tonight. Uh, we'd appreciate that. Florin giggled. I do not think he was quite sound in the head, but if he had a good route onwards, then perhaps that did not matter. A few hours later, we crested the last rise, and the glittering Aegean Sea was on the horizon. We had crossed the breadth of Europe, but there was a whole world left to travel, and Florin was right. We were not going in a straight line. I know, this is not... Man, we we screwed up. I should have. I don't know how. To, I don't know how to get over there to that. Let's go to the market. Then. Canadian time travel. Why would they have that here? Let's explore and see if we can find a way up there. There's probably not. I'm probably going to... Oh, yes! Yes! It paid off! The people of this city are crazy. They go out in evenings to tear down what remains of their city wall. I've never seen such a thing. Granted, it is not that the walls keep anything out. They are unpaid laborers for their state. They had circled barely half the city and are easily scalable due to the quantity of rubble piled up on the side and that. I stopped the young woman and asked what they were doing. Let's, yeah, let's see what they're doing. But she only laughed in my face. You may not know our city now, she replied, not in the least bit answering my question, but soon we will encompass the entirety of northern Greece. A mighty prize, I agreed in earnest, and she nodded wildly before raising a sledgehammer she had brought along for the occasion. She set about the ancient walls once more. I screwed away lest I lose my hat. The character is now well healed. Alright, let's, uh... 
hotel it up. God, we're losing so much time, like, doing this. It's night fell. I attended the Monsieur Fog. I helped the kitchen staff to clean. I went out to explore a little. Let's, uh, tend to him. Providing him with clipped mustaches with the hopes he would have a comfortable night. Our relations have improved. Yeah, I've still got to earn my job. Let's do a little recap right now of what we have going on. We visited five cities. We've traveled 2,295 miles. Cars are our favorite transport. We've traveled a little bit by sea. Traveled by land, mostly. 308 miles by air. We're well healed. We're passionate in manner. And our strong valet, valet skills. And he's comfortable with this. Awesome. Okay. So, what we need to do here is go to Istanbul. And then hopefully we can pop around here and hit Suez. Perhaps Monday? I think this departure could be discussed. Let's negotiate then. Railway whistle from our railway man should change, set to change their minds. Looks like we can grease the wheels. The ticket will require a further, further $86. We could leave at 10 a.m. for $1,200. I'm going to do that. That's fine. We're going to lose one. I know we spent a large chunk of money, but that gets us going. We boarded the train promptly, despite a crazed man who blocked our path. He's trying to tell me something. And I'll pause to listen. The artificers, he hissed. They aren't content just to make. Believe me, they long to destroy. I asked him how he could be certain, but he merely tapped the side of his nose and answered, Wires. We nodded farewell and stepped onto the train. Uh, let's converse with people. Greetings, Madame Apostolis. Passeportor, my dear. I was told Istanbul is the only city in the world to straddle two continents. The Grand Bazaar is not to be missed. Um, we don't want to go back the other way. Oh yeah, is it possible to go from Istanbul to Antalya? Indeed, Antalya can be reached by Istanbul from public carriage, but the journey is a tiring one. Um, how about oh, the Alexandria? I believe so. My aunt once took the merchant trader Nefertiti from Antalya to Alexandria. Goodbye. Oh, that actually helps us out a lot. Oh yes, that that that's a good route. That's a good route. We're still we're still. Oh my God, we the coastal train from Thessaloniki to Istanbul appeared to be determined. I don't know if that's how you say that. I swear it's Thessalonica, but I'm putting the I sound on it. John Stamos is not here to correct me. To Istanbul. Appeared to be determined to go the long way around, as if the builders had preferred to stay inside of the sea at all times for the good of their health. I enjoyed the fresh air myself, of course. With the sun shining, the Aegean was quite beautiful, and I could have been happy lazing by its shore if it were not for... Monsieur Fogg's insistence on constant departure, the importance of the speed in our mission. On board, I fell in with a middle-aged Greek couple who were going to Istanbul to meet their daughter. I asked them about the cities. I asked them about their journeys to the Middle East. Yeah, we need to find out more about the Middle East. But they shrugged. Our daughter is studying Alexandria, the mother said. So we've been to Egypt, to Luxor. The tombs are the most incredible, but we never crossed the Red Sea. The train pulled up at the Serkeki terminal, and I waved the couple off as they disembarked. Relations with fog have strengthened slightly. Amazing. All right, what do we got here that we? Listen to the music in the background. Southern Hemisphere timetable. I want to buy that, but I don't know. What's the, no, I want the driving goggles. He said something could be sold, but... Nothing for a big amount. I mean, the magnifying glass. 
We may be going to Alexandria, so we'll keep that. All right, we need to stay at the hotel. I woke in the morning in the silk of an Ottoman harem girl. What? Where she is? I was in the forbidden woman's apartments of Pop Kapi Palace. I had no memory of the previous night. It came back to me all too clearly. Let's have no memory. At least, none I wish to record, but quickly ascertained the peril of my position. Having no claim to Ottoman royalty, it was not just my master's wager at stake. Let's do this. Having no claim to Ottoman royalty, and little desire to find myself drafted into the ranks of the eunuch guard, I bit my mind to the thoughts of escape. There was only one option. To adjust the veil over my face, to keep my head down and run. To adjust the veil over my face, put a sway into my hips, and brazen it out. Alas, the morning light was less forgiving to my disguise. After some confusion, shouting and dashing about... I took a brief but refreshing swim in the Bosphorus. I scaled one of the outer walls using a palm tree. Uh, yeah. And despite some regrettably wear to my dashing silks, I arrived outside the walls in one piece. I found Monsieur Fogg reading a newspaper. Back at the lodgings. He looked up and blushed a most violent shade of red as he took in my attire, setting his cup down with uncharacteristic force. I gave my master a much abbreviated account of my ventures, and yet somehow the matter quietly dropped. But I do not think he really understood. Still, I stammered through my words before we settled in to consider the next course of our journey. Relations with Fogg had deteriorated slightly. The harem sticks to felt to a good place in Hala. So we decide to sell them. Oh my god. Alright, let's, uh... Do we have a path down? Yeah, we can actually... Arrives Wednesday. Yeah, we can adjust this. Tomorrow for 6.60. Let me, um... Let's explore. Oh, wow. Found myself in the historic quarter of Sal Tahamet, in the shadow of the glorious Mirnet of the Blue Mosque. I had some hours before I had to return to Monsieur Fogg and was finding myself attracting some entertaining attentions in my flashing silk. Why is he still wearing them? Uh, I made my way to the Grand Bazaar. The streets are full of majestic sights. I recall my promise to seek out the artifact. Okay, yeah. And gave him a strange lapis bead. I changed first. Spending two of Monsieur Fogg's pounds upon a more respectable set of clothes. Ah, my friends, the fables told of an artificer of Sully Mayan's shop are mere childish fancy compared to the wonders I saw within. Coppered body automatons fashioned to resemble humans. Rows and rows of delicate porcelain faces looked down at me. Fashion to resemble his overstuffed armchairs and lounge carelessly on embroidered throw pillows. In the dim candlelit interior, I could make out the light of a hundred jeweled eyes. I had to lean closer to make out the features of the automatons. This one sounds creepy. I could make out the light of a hundred jeweled eyes. They seemed to me like cat's eyes, predator eyes, gleaming, phosphorescent in the hushed dark. One of the automatons rose with a sudden creak from its fall, and I leapt the foot in the air and cursed. Greeted it. Let's say greeted it because we don't get scared of shit like that. Greeted it with a weak, the ready, bonjour. I am the artificer, the creature grumbled in a low voice. Not some ghoul that you should be so frightened. It came into the light and I saw it was, in truth, a fellow of middle years with a pair of brass and leather goggles pushed up over curling black hair. <laughs> I fled the shop. I'm not frightened, I said, taking hold of myself. Of course not. Of course not. You were only surprised by my little clockwork children, he agreed. Each one is wound by my own hand. Behind bent Kastim sends you a gift. I said, producing the carved lapis bead from my pocket. His face twisted with grief, and I saw at once that it was no simple bauble, but a coded message between old friends, the eye from one of his hand wrung wound creation. Ooh. He sighed. 
This comes from my very first creation, an automaton made for the Ottoman court. His face was carved from translucent jade, his lips a cluster of garnets and pearls, and his eyes from the finest gold speckled lapis. He was sewed off and lost to me. The artificer was lost in reminis reminiscence for a moment. Bihaya has been sending him back piece by piece. How do you know an airship pirate? You accept a pirate stolen bounty? It sounds most cruel. I assure you, it's quite the opposite. The captain is a good soul. He looked up at me and asked, Did she seem happy? She is a pirate. She has found a home. Well, it's, we don't know anything about this. She's a pirate! I exclaimed irately. Surely you would be better inquiring after the health and well-being of her innocent victims. Hmm. Was his only reply. He reached in his robe and drew out a bundle of notes, counting out 3,000 pounds. Here, take it as a reward. I accepted graciously and slid the money into my pocket before taking my leave. A profitable venture. Your funds have gone up by more than a thousand pounds. Boom! All right. There's Baghdad. We really want to try to get here and go on the outside. But then again, that's, oh my God, that's Wednesday. in two days. We can leave here now, though, and go. Let's go to Tehran. I think we're going to go to Tehran. Next time on 80 Days! Thanks for watching. Remember, this is part of the SKS Game Blitz. I will see you all next time. Good night, gamers.